Hey everyone, well today's video is going to be for Javith Anwar. He wanted me to make a Mythbuster video style on the Lactrodectus species, the Black Widow. So um, I'm just going to give you like a simple overview on what I know about Black Widows. Even though that I've kept tarantulas for the most part of my life, around 20 years, I'm not so much experienced on the true spider department and especially with Black Widows. The first Black Widow I owned was a Lactrodectus uh, Geometricus around 2012-2013. It lasted for like a couple of months and then it passed away due to old age. And I stopped collecting Black Widows for about two years and then I decided, heck why not go back into them again and I picked out this lovely L. Hesperus which has been with me since Christmas of 2014. So. I'm not going to really make a real Mythbuster video again because of my lack of experience on them and only own two species of this. So I'll give you a general idea of what I know about them and try to help you out if you decided that you want one and you want to know how to care for it. Okay, so Black Widows uh, are in the genus known as Lactrodectus and there's a ton of species that are available in the hobby. Uh, for example, you can get the L. Mactons, which is over here, which is the Western, uh, Southern Black Widow. This right here is the Lactrodectus Hesperus, which is the Western Black Widow. And here are other spiders that you can get from the Lactrodectus species. There's the Bishopi. Hmm. From the U.S., really cool species. Uh, the L. elegans. Oh wow, that's a nice one. Uh, that comes from Laos. Uh, Geometricus, which is... No, I didn't own this one. That is the letter female. And then there's the characteristic hourglass. This is the L. Geometricus. This is the life form. Yeah, I've owned the darkened form, which is this one, uh, L. Helselti from Australia and New Zealand. This is the one that I watch out for. The abdominal view is what it looks like here. Uh, let's see, L. Hesperus, which is the one that I have. The Western Black Widow. Then you have this one here. From South Africa, Lactrodectus indistinctus. I love these names. Uh, this one here is the Lilianae, which is the most expensive Black Widow that's currently on Tarantula Canada's price list. Uh, you can get these for around $75. It's expensive. Uh, Lactrodectus mactons, which is the Southern Black Widow from the US. So pretty much they're indigenous to a wide range of areas. Uh, this one here is the Mexican version of the El Magdons. I really like these colors, they're really cool. Uh, there's this one here, El Manavodi from Madagascar. Wow, it's so beautiful. Um, and I'm just learning about these species, they're, they're really cool. Uh, L. Pallidus, ah, which comes from Israel. Oh, that's kind of new to me. I haven't seen black widows of this caliber. Uh, this is a uh, one from Mexico. It's got the spots on them. And this one here, Lactrodectus tridecimagutatus from Croatia. So they're in a wide range of areas. So I'll just show you what they are, what they look like if you want to buy them. So Tarantula Canada does have two spiders. Uh, so El Hesperus, this is the one that I personally bought, uh, was about $20 for a wild caught female. So this was the largest one that they had. Pretty cool. And let me go to here. 
spiralings, sixteenth of an inch around ten dollars. Uh, that is the Iliani, that one there. Three quarter inch female for seventy five dollars. Uh, these are the Israeli species, an eighth of an inch for thirty, and the Tree DC Migutatus female for around $75. So they do range in price. Now keep in mind that this is Canada, uh, Tarantula Canada, and I understand that there there's a really big price range between those sold in the US and those sold in uh, Europe. So Lactrodectus you could just pretty much find anywhere somewhere in the forest. Um, pet stores probably will never likely sell them so if you want to try to get a rare exotic um, Black Widow it's probably best to get them from online dealers. So currently I have I've visited so far as a this state uh, to Ken the Bug Guy, um, SwixInverts.com and even uh, Paul Becker uh, which is PetCenterUSA.net and I currently did not find any Black Widows for sale. So I'll give you a synopsis of what I know about them. So hopefully um, you'll enjoy this video for what it is. So this is my one inch female that I got from Tarantula Canada for around $20. Now the overall appearance of this My Black Widow is generally a jet black color. Let me just give the macro so you can see. Jet black color all around except for the characteristic red hourglass that you can find underneath the belly which you find over here right in plain sight so um, pretty much uh, this is the egg sac uh, I haven't updated it in the past month because I quite frankly have no updates to share with you uh, this sack is still in development I have no idea if I'm gonna actually attempt to pull it out but I'm just gonna zoom in so you can see what the sack is really about. Um, it's very hard to see. I'm trying to trying to get the light so you can actually see. You can pretty much make out the eggs. I know it doesn't look good on camera, but I can see little tiny eggs crawling in. Uh, I don't really see any babies coming out of it. Okay. Anyway. Okay, so pretty much um, mature females are probably going to get around an inch to about an inch and a half in leg span. So what you're seeing is pretty much a full grown female. Males are considerably smaller. Uh, they can get maybe about an inch at the most maybe even half an inch so black widow females uh, of course uh, when they mate they usually kill the males and this is why um, that mating them is always very risky now the reason why I had a sack is because this spider came from the wild and I noticed that it had a bloated abdomen and then I thought to myself uh oh something must have happened and then sure enough I certainly got an egg sac and I said oh okay pretty cool and once they do hatch out I am going to be selling them um, probably likely for around five to ten dollars depending on how much I get out of them so uh, black widows how to keep them they're really really simple uh, spiders to care for so I'm used to using this arts and crafts um, cube box, which I really find very cool. So all I had to do was just make air holes on the side. So if the spider is about an inch and a half big, you probably want to make small air holes, probably around three quarters an inch. Uh, that way you don't want any of them crawling out of the cage. Now the reason why I put uh, a screen cover on there since if I do get the babies the last thing I want on my mind is to have little baby crawl crawlies coming out of the um, of the cage and probably likely when this happens I'm probably going to 
put them in a, a big bin and separate them. So you want to keep these arboreal since um, most of them will thrive in an arboreal setup. So all I have here is just sphagnum moss for the spider to hide. You don't really need substrate at all. And just twigs uh, mounted on the side so you can actually um, make webs from it. And oh dear, oh dear, 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 look at that. Okay, so I do see a baby. Uh, if I can figure out where it is, yeah, it's right there, even though it's hard to see. Yeah, it's right there. Little baby black widow. I can tell that some of them have molted. Oh no, look, they're out. Okay, I got one, two. Oh, there's a lot of them. Okay. Oh, look at that, black widow babies. Yippee, and they're alive and they're moving. <laughs> Yeah, they're small. They're about a quarter of an inch. No, sorry, not a quarter of an inch. Probably like a sixteenth of an inch. Awesome. So yeah, that's the Black Widow. Okay, so temperature-wise, you want to keep these guys around room temperature, so around 72 to 70. Five degrees Fahrenheit and they'll do well. I keep most of my tarantulas at that temperature and I have really no problems with them. For humidity you don't really need to have any substrate in there apart from the sphagnum moss and you don't really need to miss them since they really despise uh, wet substrates and they mainly get their hydration from the crickets that they eat. So pretty much it has a really identical care to the Sicarius terosus, the six-eyed sand spider. Um, yeah, so pretty much uh, these spiders are generally docile, but you want to avoid handling them because they are, these are quite potent animals, but certainly they're not really fatal. Uh, the Black Widow is currently the fourth venomous spider in the world, the first one being Fumitria fira, which is the Brazilian wandering spider, then the Sicarius terosus, the Sexide sand spider, then the Atrox robustus, which is the Australian funnel web, and then we have Black Widows. So Black Widows will only really bite you if they're threatened in any way. So that means if you try to cup the spider, uh, it might cause it to bite you but bites are extremely rare and what they do if they do bite they cause a condition known as latrodectism. Latrodectism is a symptom that's caused from the black widows and generally that they can cause intense pain, uh, some muscle rigidity, uh, vomiting and sweating. So it cannot it's certainly not a fun experience to get bitten by a black widow so even though that they're docile and they're generally good tempered <laughs> please please do not even think of handling a black widow so mating wise um <laughs> i got this spider from a from the wild it, it was a wild caught specimen that's how i got it so cheap and Lo and behold, I'd even have to mate uh, the spider and she dropped the sack within maybe about a month of owning it. But the males are a lot smaller than the females and usually because of the name Black Widow, they do get killed by uh, the female. So usually the mating always ends up uh, being bad for the male. So this is a really cool experience to see, you know, black widows crawling out. I probably have at least, I don't know, the egg sac usually what they go for is around 30 to 50 eggs. So far I'm probably seeing about, uh, I do have some here, maybe about 15, 20 maybe at the least. 
I have to see if there's actually more in there, but I thought I should share this like level update uh, showing the Black Widows. It's pretty cool that they came out and they're nice and healthy. So Javith, I hope uh, this video helps you out and helps everyone out in choosing a Black Widow. They're really good for uh, the experienced people. I wouldn't own them necessarily for the beginner simply because of its uh, toxic venom. But other than that, they're, they're really cool and fun to watch, especially when they eat. Oh, I forgot to ask, I forgot to mention how often you feed them. Well, it really depends on your schedule and how often you want to feed them. I feed mine once a month, just like you've seen in any of the tarantula video that I've uploaded, and they're fine. If you want, you could just give it like crickets, uh, maybe one or two. Uh, once every week or so and that's pretty much fine. I would not give them superworms simply because of their small size as well as superworms so they'll readily take an adult cricket and what I really like about them is the way they attack. Uh, they attack the cricket, encase it in webs and start to nibble on it. It's a really cool experience that you've seen in the 120th feeding video. So everyone, I do hope you enjoy uh, this uh, video featuring my Black Widow and her lovable babies. So, uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the mating video, probably likely tonight or tomorrow night. Thanks guys!